Lindsay, let me start with you. I mean, it was just one great number after another after another. Really phenomenal stuff. You know what? The, the market is always surprised by these great numbers. It just goes to show is you. Is the market surprised or are the market observers surprised? Because the market's been going up. <laughs> it feels like all the experts are always surprised. Yeah, I think it's the experts. There's a lot of naysayers out there. They're just It's been the hatest bull market of all time, right? Everyone's just waiting for numbers to roll over. But the fact of the matter is they just keep going higher, hitting all new time records or 20 year highs and a lot of different statistics. And, you, you know, we're getting into earnings season too. It's going to be the third quarter of over 20% earnings growth. That's almost unheard of, right? I mean, I don't know, I, you know, I guess someone will comb the books and find out if this ever happened before, but I remember the first quarter over 20% was supposed to be the high water mark. Yeah, this, is, this actually has happened before, but it was in 2010 when we were coming out right. of the financial crisis. So we're up against very easy comparisons. Right. So, and th the difference though this time is, is that this is being driven by tax reform. It's being driven by fiscal stimulus and a growing economy that's reacting to all of that. And David, I think what we've done is we've unleashed something here. Unleashed something that, by the way, I think a lot of people didn't think uh, was possible. The animal spirits in this country where we no longer are okay with mediocrity. I mean, an ADP number, think about this for a moment. 230,000 jobs. Wall Street estimated 180,000. My favorite area, goods producing, dirty fingernails. Why? Manufacturing, 5,000. Construction, 34,000. Uh, uh, mining, 5,000. This is amazing because for me, it goes to the heartland. These are jobs that people said we would never get back in this country and we shouldn't want them anyway. I agree and I think you know the whole dynamic has been you know that we were so afraid that this would roll over at some point and I think what the president and the administration is trying to do is set up a dynamic right now where we can really break out. Let's break out of that malaise we've been in for the last 10 years and it's not just the jobs numbers it's this pro-growth agenda and I would point to one thing I would po point to the rollback of regulatory overreach that has really weighed on this economy for well over a decade I think that's pretty exciting stuff. You know I guess that's uh, that's such a key but it's hard to quantify it right I mean there are organizations out there that say okay X amount of regs are taken off and it equals this, but it doesn't roll off the tongue. But it has had a major impact. It has had a major impact. And if you're looking for, for earnings right now, it's, markets tend to follow earnings. And right now the earnings look pretty good. We're looking at, we can't sustain the 20% growth at this point, but we can certainly do 8 9% over the next couple of years. Sean? I don't know that we can't sustain it. We've been sustaining it. Over the last seven consecutive quarters, the average annual growth rate, excuse me, quarterly growth rate has been 22 for seven quarters. For seven quarters in a oh. row. The previous seven quarters minus 9% quarterly. So yes, we, we, we've got momentum's earning growth and, and it's going to continue to grow. The consumer is in excellent what position. What drives it from here? The, the, I think same things that have been driving it. The consumer is in excellent health and is, is buying and producers are producing because consumers are buying. We're going to anniversary the, the tax cut though so that we're going to have some kind of a pullback at this point. But 8-9% is pretty good. I'm looking at 170 next year, 185 in the S&P for earnings next year. Pretty good growth. You know, uh, of course, uh, someone else, two other people agree with this, Jerome Powell and Charles Evans, right? The head of the, the uh, Federal Reserve and a key voting member of the Federal Reserve. What, what Chairman Powell of the Federal Reserve said actually has echoed. I mean, many people think it's just a campaign stump speech when President Trump says, this is the best economy ever. And they say, well, we say, well, there was Reagan, there were others. But Powell said this is the be this is unprecedented with respect to modern history. That, again, we, we have not seen this in recent years like it is something special yeah it, it truly is and i think that's why he actually has the room to move up the fed funds rate you go back in history you you usually see the fed funds rate running in line with nominal gdp nominal gdp is at about seven percent right now it was in the in the second quarter where, where the fed funds rate they just pushed it up to two to two and a quarter they have a long way to go and the reason that we saw today the 10-year yield spike above 3.1 up to a seven-year high was because of growth, not because of the fear of inflation. So essentially, these bond yields are going up. That means uh, the, the people are, are coming out of them. Investors are leaving bonds, so the yields have to go up to become more attractive. But where does that money go? Does it go into the stock market? 
Uh, it probably does, and that's a challenge, Charles, because, you know, not everybody, certainly retirees, you can't put all your money in the stock market, as much as I love that. So we're going to have to find what's going to be the, the, the asset class that's going to offset risk in the future. You know, we got a chart up there uh, from the American Association of Individual Investors. You know, one thing, every time the market gets so exciting like this, people assume that there's a giddiness out there, that to quote, an irrational exuberance. Bullishness is barely above bearishness, and it's way down. You know, one of my great fears, Charles, that so many people people have missed this rally, but is it too late? This is another reason that the market has a lot higher to go, in my opinion, is because so many people have missed it. So many people, including a lot of institutions, have so much money on the sidelines, there's plenty of buying power left for the stock market to go a lot higher. This has been, as Lindsay said, this has been the most hated bull market in the history of all markets. But let's separate the markets from the economy, because I want to focus on the economy right now, because this impacts everyone. I mean, so does the stock market to a large degree, but this economic boom, and what it means for jobs, because we got this jobs report coming on Friday, Lindsay, and I'm suspecting, I think coming into the week, uh, consensus was maybe 180, 200 in that area. I think it's got to be a whole lot higher. And let's not forget the it's ISM, the service industry, the employment part of that all time record. That's right. And you know what? I think the number might be the reason the number is low on Friday is because of the hurricane that we just had go through the Carolinas. That does impact employment and it'll bring it down. But that just makes today's ADP number just all that more impressive. And so it's, a, it's an indicator of what we can expect. The on. big question a lot of our viewers have is, is Shaw, I'll ask you this first. Okay, if everything is so great, when do they start to really, really see it in those paychecks? <laughs> That's the, the $64 billion question. It's coming. I don't think it's going to come um, in, in a flood. I think it's going to be incremental gains because there are pl there's plenty of jobs out there that are going wanting for people to fill them. So I think that's going to keep labor prices down for a good while. Um, it's a matter of the, the, the jobs being the needed to be filled and people not, not having the education and the technical skills to fill it. So that's going to keep, I think, wages, you know, really a little bit subdued rather than, you know, hopefully what we'd like to see is them rise considerably, but that's not going to happen. If that doesn't mean that, that means that we're going to have some inflation, but not enough to worry the economy. Or I the think markets. it's going to happen right now. I think right now there's you so think, much competition. Uh, you think a 3% right year over year hike uh, uh, on Friday, we could see that? I don't know if you're going to see it this Friday, but you're going to certainly see it in the next couple uh, at this point. It's been it's like, already I mean, exploding anecdotally, right? right? It should have happened a long time ago, it's, just it's considering true. all the dynamics, the job openings, everything we talk about. And even even today, we have uh, um, Amazon announcing, or yesterday, that they were going to raise the minimum wage to $15. You know, Walmart's at 11 um, I think Target's at 13 So they're going to probably have to push a little bit higher to meet you know, Amazon. So there are going to be some pressures there, but not enough to move the economy in any negative fashion. You guys now get to talk about my favorite area of the market, the economy, those diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Those big rigs, baby. Did you see the September number? Huh? The last quarter, the best quarter ever for big rigs. Rev up those diesels. Nick's I mean, is truck driver. Up 92% year over year, up 206% over the last two years. Rev up those diesels. Those are jobs. Those are 45,000 trucks, 45,000 jobs, 45,000 people to do maintenance on them, 45,000 people to clean them. Lindsay, those are American jobs. I love it. They are American jobs, but the truck area is one, one part of the economy that you're seeing them having a hard time filling those jobs. So they're probably going to have to increase the pay for some of those jobs. All right, folks, get, get your, your, uh, your truck driver's license if you're out there. <laughs> no, you know what? The first year, one of the guys watching the show, I hope he's watching it now, he, I inspired him and he became a truck driver, a kid named Quincy, and he's been doing very well.